Hey everyone, Munib here. Today is a really special day in the history of this project. As Peter was talking, Stacks 2.0 is going live today. And the launch is happening by independent miners. This is also a historic moment where my company basically did the early R&D and protocol development and public infrastructure building, but now we are no longer in control. Independent miners are launching this blockchain on top of Bitcoin. And today I'll walk you through more about our design. So let's bring up the slides. Stacks brings apps and smart contracts for Bitcoin. Let me first give you a disclaimer. We've been very careful with compliance and regulation. And this disclaimer basically says that my company Hero is not doing any token offering, any securities offering at all. This is just a decentralized network that is being launched by independent miners. And you might see some forward looking statements uh, in my talk. So we're all excited about a future decentralized next generation internet. Some people call it Web3. There are basically two tracks to it. One track is about decentralized finance. And we are seeing a lot of innovation here. People are building different types of smart contracts. They're trying to take away power from Wall Street and give it to the hands of engineers and developers who can actually plug and play different components and build on top of an open network. The second track is more about decentralized applications, where people are building more secure, more open versions of social networks, blogging platforms, and this topic is extremely relevant today with what we are seeing happen on the internet that is increasingly in the hands of a few large tech monopolies. If you look at the landscape of these crypto networks, there's Bitcoin that is becoming gold 2.0. It is a store of value and people are accepting the dominance of Bitcoin in that domain. But there are also applications and smart contracts, especially on platforms like Ethereum and some next generation protocols that are coming up. The Stacks project is a little different. Our thesis is that these apps and smart contracts would just happen on top of Bitcoin. We think of Bitcoin as a foundational layer for this next generation internet, much like TCP IP. TCP IP on the internet is actually a very simple protocol. It just delivers packets from point A to point B. Bitcoin is a settlement layer. It can settle transactions between party A and party B. It actually doesn't care about what that transaction is. And that fundamental property could actually be used to build an entire internet, apps and smart contracts on top of Bitcoin in an extremely scalable and secure way. That's what the Stacks project is about. This is what is launching today when the right Bitcoin block arrives. There's a very interesting quote by Satoshi Nakamoto where he talks about how new types of use cases and applications could be built as separate blockchains. But his wish really was that they can share the compute power of Bitcoin. Interestingly, if you look at how our industry emerged, we, we sometimes see this competition between blockchains or this tribal mentality. And one of the reasons for that is that everyone is fighting for these scarce resources. Everyone's fighting for hash power or, or more resources for their own network. Whereas if everyone could just share the computing power, the hash power of the Bitcoin blockchain, then everyone would have a vested interest in the success of Bitcoin, in the success of a single foundational layer on top of which everything else could be built. And that is the vision that we are coming full circle on with the design of Stacks 2.0. So why Bitcoin? Bitcoin is by far the most battle tested, most secure, and has the highest amount of hash power there. Bitcoin has network effects. The more secure and established this network becomes, the more people start to trust it, the more people think that this is durable and I would hold Bitcoin, I will use that as a store of value 
and I will add to the, to the durability of Bitcoin. But it's not just hash power. Bitcoin has something like $700 billion of passive capital right now. It's basically sovereign money that's just sitting there passively in a lot of accounts. And the promise of smart contracts is that a lot of this passive capital could actually be converted into actively deployed capital, which is truly revolutionary. We are seeing smart contracts on other platforms, but Bitcoin by far is the biggest market and has the most amount of crypto capital. So what our design really does is that we don't compete with Bitcoin for being sovereign money. We accept Bitcoin as a reserve currency. We accept the base Bitcoin blockchain as a source of ultimate truth. And Stacks is fuel for smart contracts. The Stacks cryptocurrency gets consumed whenever you are executing smart contracts or processing any transactions on Stacks. And this way, our blockchain connects to Bitcoin, benefits from the security of Bitcoin, can act and can grow in harmony with Bitcoin. Let me walk you through some of the designs of the Stacks 2.0 blockchain itself. So there are basically two fundamental limitations of the Bitcoin blockchain. And they're not even really limitations. They're there by design. Bitcoin was designed to be simple. It was designed to not have a full programming language with it. But what that translates into is that you cannot do a lot of transactions directly on Bitcoin and Bitcoin does not have a full smart contract language. Those are the two things that Stacks brings. So in many ways, we extend the functionality of Bitcoin and while benefiting from the security of Bitcoin. On the Stacks chain, you can actually do thousands of transactions that settle on Bitcoin on a per block basis. For people who might be familiar with Lightning, this is a little bit like if, if a Lightning channel is settling on Bitcoin automatically every block. More importantly, Stacks introduces smart contracts on the chain. So the Stacks miners maintain that extra state that goes with smart contracts, and they have an incentive for doing so because they're mining the, the Stacks token. The project started at Princeton University where I did my PhD. And the early team was really a bunch of computer scientists that were, were doing heavy R&D. And after years of work, like literally years of work in which we invented a new programming language, invented a new type of consensus, the first consensus that is between two blockchains and several other innovations in different parts of the stack, we're finally here today where SACS 2.0 is actually live. Clarity, the smart contract language, is going live and years and years of work will finally be in production and we couldn't be more excited. Let me tell you a little bit about Clarity. Clarity is a programming language that is decidable. What that means is that you can tell with exact precision, with the mathematical proofs, what a program can and cannot do before you execute it. And this is, this is a really big deal. People who are familiar with Solidity on Ethereum would know that there is a gas estimate on Solidity. It's an estimate because you don't know what the program is actually going to do. Whereas in Clarity, there is a precise gas fee because you know exactly what this program is going to do when you execute it. And in terms of security, this is night and day because developers can know what can go wrong in their program or have proofs that everything is going to go right before they execute it. And these smart contracts could have hundreds of millions of dollars in crypto assets on them. So security is the main thing to optimize for. The consensus algorithm called proof of transfer is a unique consensus algorithm that gives you consensus between the Bitcoin chain and the Stacks chain. Mining happens on Bitcoin and the, the leader that wins leader election through the consensus process is writing new blocks on stacks. For more details on the consensus algorithm, I highly recommend the proof of transfer white paper that, that has all of the details. Let me give you a brief overview of the stacks ecosystem as it stands today. As I mentioned that the project started at Princeton University 
and it was in R and D phases early on. Over the years, my company raised around seventy million dollars in terms of token offerings to build out the public infrastructure on the Stacks one point oh chain. We got more than four hundred applications, and Stacks two point oh has always been our master design, the the blockchain that we wished existed when we were starting off. And over time, the ecosystem has decentralized a lot, and there are now several independent entities and developers working in the ecosystem. So with Stacks 2.0, all of those 400 applications, the ones that upgrade to Stacks 2.0 will be available. But more interestingly, Clarity smart contracts would go live for the first time. And these contracts include things like decentralized exchanges or new types of financial products and, and, and so on. Our project was the first one ever to get a SCC qualification for a token offering. Compliance and regulations has always been very important to us because we think that for the crypto industry to mature, you have to have clear legal and compliant paths available, and you cannot live in, in this gray area. So we have actually done a lot of work on, on, the, on the regulation and compliance side, even though we are engineers at heart and most of our work has been on building these core technologies. So in the Stacks ecosystem, now there are several independent entities like the nonprofit Stacks Foundation, like Freehold, that is a community focused entity, or Daemon that focuses on mining and is, is based out of Hong Kong. There are several wallets or new types of client interfaces that are being developed by new internet labs, secret key labs, and, and, and so on. There are several uh, people who participated over the years in the various offerings to purchase the Stacks cryptocurrency. They include Union Square Ventures, Y Combinator, Winklevoss Capital, and, and frankly, at this point, more than 300,000 people hold the Stacks cryptocurrency. A very interesting thing that's happening with Stacks 2.0 is that the holders of Stacks cryptocurrency that want to actively participate in consensus and lock up their stacks to help the consensus process would actually be able to earn Bitcoin as a reward directly from the protocol. And this is a fully decentralized process. Anyone, anyone can participate in it. It's completely open. And for more details, you can go to our website to see how the process works and what are the different types of Bitcoin rewards that people can get from the consensus offer. Stacks 2.0 mainnet has been in progress for over a year. I think the first commit on the Rust code was two years ago. And imagine the amount of work that went into this when developing a new consensus algorithm, building up a blockchain from scratch, testing it, and making sure that it is ready to be launched by independent miners. That time has come, and it's literally today that we will witness the launch of Stacks 2.0. Over the years, the community around Stacks has grown a lot. I think now we have more than 33,000 people in various Telegram groups around the world globally. And that makes me really proud. Imagine one of the original reasons why I did not become a professor and actually came out of academia to build this technology out in the real world was to make a real impact. And seeing this enthusiastic community everywhere, people who are passionate about building a next internet on Bitcoin on, and, and are spread across all over the world really gives me a lot of energy to do this work uh, day in and day out. Over the years, we've been heads down on technology, but now we have reached a stage where we're trying to take the message to a broader audience. So Stacks 2.0 is going live today. For more information, you can go to stacks.co. Thank you so much.